Okay, okay. now, yeah. Perfect. So I will speak about dopamine role and in obsessive behaviors as a model of uh, in Parkinson's disease of impulse control disorder. And dopamine has a multi-property component, which is involving uh, effortful choices when we have to balance between cost and benefit of a reward. It also has it plays a role in delayed gratification, uh, that is the delayed reward and the value that we need to wait for our, for our rewards sometimes. And this uh, corresponds to a, a ventral striatal uh, at, the, at the level of uh, functional studies. It also has been involved in response inhibition, so to suppress an ongoing movement. And this has been uh, associated with uh, codate uh, dopamine transmission. And all these combined uh, cognitive processes are important to control your, your behavior. If, if one of them fails, uh, you may pro pro produce an excessive behavior, such as the one observed here in the final of the World Cup from uh, Sinedine Zidane that couldn't control properly uh, uh, his uh, excessive behavior. So it's, it's a fine-grained system that needs to be uh, all healthy to be controlled. Um, yeah, at the level of Parkinson's disease, uh, which is the, the topic of the seminar today, um, there is a loss of uh, dopaminergic neurons in the substantia nigra that then expands to the nigro striatal pathway uh, affecting the posterior pitamen, as you can see here. And these uh, patients need uh, medication, the, which is Dibodopa, and some of them develop a behavioral form of addiction that turns into a, an excessive behavior. Some of them develop uh, compulsive shopping or compulsive uh, eating, gambling, or hypersexuality, which is the topic that I will cover today. So it's a complicated issue and uh, because the medication is, is so important for patients to move uh, better, but uh, they get uh, up to 14% of patients, they get these uh, non-motor non side effects. So we need to really know why they develop it and know the uh, neurobiological foundations of this problem. At the level of uh, neurocognitive changes, we see that they have a delayed discounting increase in, in ICD patients, in, in impulsive patients while on medication. So it's driven by medication. Uh, in, in other words, they, they prefer a higher, they have a higher urge to earn fast money. They want the, uh, the, the quickest, the better, the, the money. So they can't wait for money. Uh, we will see more on this, uh, on this measure later in, in some of, of my studies. They have a deficit in learning and stopping abilities. So when they have to control the, themselves and learn that new behavior, they, they provide, uh, they, they exhibit the problems in, in stopping. And also there is a paradoxical effect that where they don't uh, they don't report in some studies a problem in response suppression. So they are good when they have to stop a movement, which is kind of odd and unexpected, but there are reasons to believe this is true. And what I will be covering today is that uh, whether these excessive behaviors seen in impulse control disorders, whether are they a, a problem of uncontrolled actions in, uh, in the sense of impulsive actions and response inhibition problems, or whether is it a problem of delay gratification? Is it really that they cannot tolerate to wait and see a, their reward? So we will be speaking about uh, the theories of top-down control that uh, from prefrontal cortex uh, monitor control the limbic reward system, or is it a problem of that the valuation system is upside down and it uh, drives excessively the behavior? So these two systems interact uh, nicely in a healthy brain, but may be the, the driving force and the explanation for excessive behaviors. So one of the studies that uh, we are currently running in Madrid, we recruited uh, patients with hypersexuality in, in Parkinson's disease. And basically we asked them to perform a stop signal task, but adding uh, erotic, erotic uh, stimuli before the go or the stop responses. So basically they were seeing uh, erotic image followed by a go trial and sometimes they were seeing uh, a non-erotic uh, image followed by a go trial and a stop signal that had a varying delays between go and stop so we would obtain a, a response uh, a response speed of uh, inhibition uh, termed SSRT and what we see at the behavior level is that uh, the patients with uh, impulse control disorders while unmedicated they, saw, they see a slowness in, in response suppression, but when they are off medication, when, when they are not with the uh, origin of the problem, which is medication, they, they are faster to inhibit. In other words, they, 
they stop faster under after the erotic uh, stimuli only. So this is quite a specific and it's quite uh, a, 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 a parallelism of the daily life that they experience this problem. At the neural level, we did this in the fMRI context. And what we see is that when these patients uh, were on medication and they could successfully stop, uh, we, they recruit a, a large network of uh, limbic regions, including encoded BTA and cortical pre-SMA and cingulate. Uh, to successfully stop. So they need to recruit a large network to successfully stop uh, while unmedicated. And this uh, circuit, using a dynamic causal modeling, we see that there is a differentiation local effect in the pre-SMA between the group that has the impulsivity compared to the group that doesn't have the impulsivity. So that's one result that is quite uh, uh, novel and, and striking as a cortical area to possibly target. And also a second effect is the descending pathway from pre-SMA to CODI that is also reducing the impulsivity patients compared to the non-impulsive patients. So this is, this is uh, another result that is still uh, it's, uh, uh, in uh, writing and submission process, but will soon come out. So, um, and then moving on to a, a second topic that I wanted to introduce you is whether these excessive behaviors is a matter of a delayed gratification problem is that is this a problem that they have a, a waiting mechanism that is driving impulsive and excessive behavior in ICD? So, are they capi capable of not? Uh, are, are they capable of waiting, or are they not really capable of waiting? So, this was mm, the question that we we addressed with this study, and so we again selected hypersexual patients and we asked them to perform this task where they saw a fuzzy image of a naked woman and they were asked to decide whether they wanted to wait to see the image in full here, uh, waiting for a shorter time if they rejected, and they would see the image for a shorter time. But if they accept to wait, uh, waiting times up to nine seconds, they would then get their reward for a longer time. So it, it, it kind of mimics, again, the, the real life scenario to uh, wait or not uh, to get what they really like. And we, we were focused on the choice moment of, uh, for the brain activity as well. But at the behavioral level, we already get some interesting results and we go against the literature. And uh, because the patients with uh, ICD unmedicated are capable of waiting to get the reward. They have the, the uh, lowest uh, discounting rate. Um, as you can see in the control group have a positive value and, and they are not bothered to wait for these images. Well, these people are really motivated in waiting. We also computed a subjective value uh, score of uh, each trial, which is the uh, weight of uh, benefits divided by cost. And what we see here is also a, a larger subjective value in these patients while unmedicated. So this makes sense as well. They, they, they don't maybe have a, as much of a cost in the waiting times uh, and the reward is so high that the subjective value is as well high for this group of people. And what we see in the brain is the uh, correlation uh, with the medial prefrontal cortex in, as a group. Uh, but when, when we divide the two parameters of the subjective value, the delay, which means the cost of getting the reward in the ICD group has a positive relation. So the more um, delay, the longer and the, and the more cost to get the reward, this region activates uh, uh, more significantly in this group, whereas for the non-ICD and the controls goes the other way around, suggesting that these people will really want to wait and they engage this region to uh, put themselves in the waiting situation, whereas the other groups are not bothered in waiting for this. And we also find a ventral striatum activity in relation to subjective value. But in this case, it, the, the nice result goes in the rating, so in the, in the value of the stimuli. And what the uh, uh, patients tell us is that what they are um, seeing is uh, 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 what they like to see. The more they like to see the image, the less the, this uh, ventral striatal activity is ex expressed. Uh, while in the other groups, in the PD and, and the controls, is the opposite. The more they like it, the more this region activates. So it is a kind of upside down system in the ICD group may explain why they don't really value the uh, rewarding sexual rewards. And maybe that's why they engage in this uh, hypersexuality uh, types of behavior. So as, as conclusions, what uh, I've been uh, telling you about, uh, uh, it's uh, the, the role of dopamine in excessive behaviors and in specifically with uh, hypersexual patients. Um, 
we see that excessive behavior in ICB is mediated by reactive control deficits uh, that were mainly uh, driven uh, by, by medication in the ICD group, and that may produce the uncontrolled actions. This was associated to uh, connectivity changes from pre-SMA and estroiatum that were uh, lost in the ICD group or were reduced, and that also may be a, a neurobiological explanation of the deficits seen in, in, in ICD patients. And re regarding the, the delay discounting study, ICD with hypersexuality seem to be willing to wait for longer uh, when they get uh, an erotic reward. So this is so opposed to other studies that were showing monetary rewards. But the problem with these other studies is that the money perhaps is not as appealing or uh, arousal for the, these patients. And when you put them with the correct rewarding stimuli, then they, they are motivated to wait. They have a reason to wait, right? And finally, the results of a frontal striatal change in medial prefrontal cortex and ventral striatum that is actually upside down or reversed compared to the non-impulsive patients. And then this also may, count, uh, may account for the excessive desire that the, these patients uh, experience. So a top-down mechanism that may be impaired in, in these patients, in, implicating mainly in our studies the pre-SMA, uh, will explain the action impulsivity that we see in, 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 in the results. And, uh, and this turns into an excessive approach behavior. And also this uh, result can be combined with a evaluation system, a change in the reward limbic circuitry, where we see changes in ventral striatum and medial prefrontal cortex that may increase the evaluation system, the evaluation of uh, rewards without consideration of the consequences. So these systems combined together may be an explanation of the uh, excessive behavior seen in these patients. However, these studies are separate, uh, but still are at least in the same cohort of, uh, of a known motor problem, which is hypersexuality. Then other studies may follow to, to, to explain other forms of excessive behaviors. So these studies, I would like to thank the people that helped uh, in, in Spain. Uh, also, they were done in collaboration in, in France. Um, as well with the funding agents that we, without them, it won't be possible. Um, thank you for watching. Uh, thanks so much, Ignacio. Um